Cuban. What's up, Trevor? What's going on? Welcome to The Daily Show. Thanks for having me. Good to have you here in person. Yeah. First thing I want to know, because I see the clips all the time, everyone watches the show all over the world. Yep. How many people come up to you and, and just pitch you things in real life, like all the time? It must be your life now. Everywhere. In everywhere the bathroom, sitting in the urinal, you name it. I get pitched everywhere. Wait, what's the best pitch you got at a urinal? Do you remember it? <laughs> Turn around. <No. laughs> Congratulations, season 14 of the show. Yes. I'd love to know, when you started this, did you think it was going to be as big as it is? Is no. this a business that you saw coming? Oh, no. They asked me to come on as a guest in the second season, and it would bounce around, like when Desperate Housewives, remember that show? Yes, when it wasn't course. on, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'd take its place. And I thought, this thing is dead, so I'm just going to go on there, raise hell. Next thing you know, that we're in season 14. Season 14, it's successful, it's, it's, it's fun, people love the show, it's syndicated around yeah. the world. I'd love to know what you think makes it so successful. Why do we all love watching people come on and then try and pitch you an idea that you either trash or invest in or completely try and take over? Because everybody wants to be that person who can just have an idea in their garage, mm -hmm. in their bedroom. You know, we all get it, right? You get that feeling in your stomach and you're all fired up, you check it with your friends. But these are people who made it in front of us. And if we say yes, they go from being just a business to being that guy, that business. And that, that's why anybody can be that person. Yeah. You, you, I feel like you were that person. I was. You know, you know I've, I've read about you and there were parts in your life where you thought you were going to retire at 35, and yeah. yet here you are, many decades later, still, you look like you love... <laughs> no, that's not a diss, it is many decades later. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, right? Oh, come on. This is true, you, you're living, but it, it feels <laughs> like you... <laughs> no, 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 you got... They're assholes, don't listen to them. These people are assholes. What I'm saying is, you, you're having a great time, and it feels like you haven't lost that drive. Like, no, what man. makes you get out of bed every single day if it's not the money? Uh, I'm competitive. I like to kick ass. If okay. you start a business and you're in my business, I'm gonna f you up. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, for real. I mean, that, I, I love to compete. Right. That explains a lot. That it explains. Does. That explains like the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, you know, I was talking to someone who works on the show, and he said an interesting thing. He said, he said, uh, Mark Cuban seems to me like one of the only super fans who took over a team. Because some people buy teams because they have the money to buy a yeah. team. Yeah. You seem like you, you bought a team because you love the team, you love the sport. Yeah. Everyone says the team changed because of you. Many people have credited you in the NBA of being part of changing the culture, of trying to make it so that even the people who work behind the scenes are happy and are, 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 are enjoying themselves. Like, why did you decide that? You could have just gone in for a team, but you part No, of I love team. basketball. Like, I'll get out there and I'll shoot with the guys. I mean, just think about it. You love play basketball. I get to walk into my own arena, get up shots. You know, and the best part is, you know, game-winning shot, the crowd's going nuts, everybody's pile driving, jumping on the guy. I get to jump on him too, and I don't, <laughs> I don't get arrested, right? Anybody else, you all run there, I'll arrest your ass. I run out there, I have fun. The NBA has been, has been uh, you know, an interesting period where, you know, for a long time, Politics. I mean, it was everything. NBA and NFL. And then, you know, the NBA was seen as this place where, uh, you know, players were speaking their mind. It was a really mm -hmm. aware organization. Adam Silver gets a lot of credit, for instance. Many of the owners do as well. Recently, though, there's been a scandal that has rocked the Phoenix Suns. And, you know, everyone's been talking about how to deal with an owner where he's been accused of everything, from racism to inappropriate messages at work. And, and I think the fine came down at $10 million and a year. Some mm -hmm. have said it isn't enough. Some have said it's, it's just enough. W what do you make of that? And more than the fine, because, I mean, that's not your job, but what do you think the, 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 the position of an owner in a team needs to be in terms of how it's outward-facing? Like, wh why is it important to be a certain way as the owner? You know, rather than talking about that situation specifically, I can tell you what I think, right? I may be responsible for writing the checks for the Dallas Mavericks, mm -hmm. but all of North Texas really owns the Dallas Mavericks. It's the only business where I get emails from people saying, my son has cancer, you know, can you bring some players out? Can we, will you visit? You know, my son just died or my daughter just died. Can we bury him in a Luka Doncic jersey? You know, there's, there's no other industry. You know, and when you win, when Google has a great quarter, nobody in their city, you know, mountain, wherever it is, celebrates. Right. When your team wins a championship, the whole city goes nuts. The you whole city's it. on fire, mm -hmm. right? It's just such a different industry. And with that comes a responsibility. You have to have, you have to, you know, lead. You have to be able to set examples for diversity and e inclusion and show people that, you know, this is the real world and we can change it and we can be part of it and make it better. And, you know, I think that's a responsibility that comes with owning a sports team. That's probably why you've been so successful. Yeah. It really is. You also, you know, you're also behind 
I, I remember reading this, and you know, we live in a world where billionaires tweet all kinds of crazy things all the time. <laughs> I won't mention names, <laughs> but <laughs> billionaires will tweet whatever, and then they'll yeah. say, oh, I'll change the world, I'll do this. Or whatever. Yeah. I remember seeing a tweet of yours where you were basically talking about upending the drug industry yep. and uh, lowering prescription drug prices, and yep. I was like, ah, oh, here we go again, hope's up and nothing's gonna happen. But you actually We're did it. We're doing it. We're the real deal. Yeah, we started a company called costplusdrugs.com. And if you take any medication at all, just go there, put in the name of it, and what we do that's different. Every other drug manufacturer, I mean, no one trusts the drug industry at right, all, right. right? And so what we said was, you know, sunlight is the best disinfected. So we, if you go and you put in the drug, and if we carry it, um, it'll show you not only what we sell it for, it'll show you our cost. And like we'll, actual cost? Our actual cost, but we really pay for it. We mark it up 15%, that's it. We have a $3 pharmacy fee and $5 for shipping. That's it. And so you know exactly what we paid. And so you can trust it. And that's the first time in the pharmacy industry where when you're buying a medication, you can trust that you're paying a fair price. So you're making money? Not yet. <laughs> okay. Not yet, but, but we will. But you we think will the eventually. business will make money? Yeah, we'll make money. So, but so, then, so then help me understand this uh -huh. then. Uh, somebody who isn't a billionaire, how is it, how is it that you've decided to get into a business where you won't make money now, you will make money in the future, mm -hmm. and you're still able to provide people with the drugs, and it seems like it's a win-win for everyone. What, then why don't other drug companies just do this? Why, why, why? Because what's happened is all, when someone like me has started, or anybody has started a company like yeah. this, and they're cut the cost of medications, what happens is someone buys them, right? One of the big companies buys them out, and puts them away. Buys the company. Buys that company, Got so it. that takes them off the market. I can't be bought, right? I don't need, I, you can't, I don't, my next dollar is not gonna change my life, but if I get a chance to fuck up the pharmaceutical industry. You want some Yeah, I mean, the drugs, like, I just had a friend, literally, two days ago, a guy that I knew in college, Landon Turner, is taking this drug, Derek, Co I don't even know how it's pronounced, mm -hmm. and he's like, Mark, it cost me $3,000 a month. I can't afford it, can you help? And it was literally, it's a generic. So I had our guys go into it, not five minutes ago, while mm -hmm. I was waiting in the green room, he came back, Landon was paying $3,000 a month, it's now gonna cost him $63 a month. Oh, wait, wait, I was wrong, wait, wait, wait. no, I was wrong. $63 for three months, three months. So, okay. That's how crazy this industry is. Yeah, but I, so I get that you can't be bought, but surely people are not happy with what you're doing. Like, it, it doesn't seem mm -hmm. like you are well, it's good weird. for business. Yeah, it's weird. Because so people like Martin Screlly, sorry to cut you yeah. off, people like Martin Screlly be became famous for coming in, buying a drug that people need to yeah. survive, and then hiking it up by I don't know how many thousand percent of whatever it was. But it feels like you're gonna make a lot of enemies doing this. Yeah. And as you say, you're competitive, so you don't really care, but. Is there, is there no way they can undercut you? Is there yeah, no there's way this way, could... I mean, there's ways, right? But <laughs> it ain't gonna happen, right? So what, the way it works now, there's, there's three big companies that are insurance companies that own these things called pharmacy benefit managers who are responsible for really distorting the prices. Okay. And then they also own the big retail pharmacies, all the big names you've heard uh -huh. of. And so they're able to control all the pricing elements. We work outside of that. So right now we're mail order, so if you go to costplusdrugs.com, like Landon will be able to buy his drug um, for all that less money, and then we'll ship it to him, we'll mail it to him. Soon we'll be able to do it at local independent pharmacies, but because we work outside of that system, they can't stop us. And the cooler part about it is, we all look at manufacturers of insulin and other drugs and say, they're the cause of the problem. They're really not. It's these big three companies that are distorting their prices, and the manufacturers don't have any other way to sell it. So now we can sell it for them. And so, you know, we're not there on insulin yet, but we're working on it. We're not there on some of the big mm -hmm. brand names, but we're close. And so, you know, we literally, literally, Trevor, I mean, five years from now, we can look back and say, you f them up. <laughs> and, and that'll be like a dream of, that's my goal. Yeah, you, you... I think, I think one of the reasons you, you're so popular and interesting is because you have a different view on how to be successful and what success means. You know, um, those who are familiar with your stories will know that when you, when you sold your first company, you made a lot of money, but you also made many of your employees yeah. millionaires. Yeah. And they weren't like stockholders, they didn't have options. That you just said, all right, everybody, Bonuses. I made money, we all yeah. make money. Yep. And then you did it again with your next company. That yep. was like a big sale, and you did it again. And, and you, company, yeah. you've had this attitude that seems counter to what many Americans think yeah. these days where they say, if I get rich, I get rich, screw all of you. No, and everyone who's been in your path, everyone who's gone along with you, can go, oh yeah, I worked with Mark Cuban, and you can see that we made money. In this instance, let's say you are successful. This company could go on to become you know, very rich. It could, it could make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. 
how do we know, and, and I, I'm, I'm assuming you're that kind of person, but how do we know that then at some point you won't raise those drug prices when everyone is on cost plus? Like, can I'm, you make a promise to the people? Can you say, this is what we're going to stick Mark it I'm Mark Cuban. <laughs> 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 promise, not, seriously, I, I, that's the whole goal. That's the mission. I'm not, because I get asked that all the time. Yeah. He's just, you know, low prices now, yes. jack him up later. I, if anything, we've been lowering prices. If you follow us at Cost Plus Drugs on Twitter, I take pride in every couple of weeks. We're cutting prices. We're not, we're not increasing prices. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this day and age, and you talk about this all the time, it's just insane that somebody has to choose between rent, food, and medication. Right. And you know, people think capitalism is just about how much money can I make. It's not. Capitalism is me being able to start a business and choose the outcomes that I want. No one else can tell me what my mission is. No one else can tell me what my goal is. No one else can tell me what's important to me. I get to make that choice. For some people, look, if, if I'm 25 years old, it's making as much money as I can, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? But now, like I've been saying, if you get a chance to turn around an industry where people now don't have to make those choices, mm -hmm. that's the best reward of all time. I wish you the best. I'll take it. I'm going to hold you to your word. Oh, I know where to find you. I, I'm going to find you. I know exactly where you are in Dallas. Mark Cuban, everybody.